This is WICR. All right, Iona, welcome back. We're here live yet again for our second portion of the show where we're going to cover the MLB World Series that just ended last week. Uh, we had this World Series go into seven games, actually. Me and Gio were here last week when we were getting into game six, and uh, it actually turned out that the Royals had won game six in that uh, last week and moved it to game seven where they played in... Uh, also in Kansas City, where the Giants happened to win this game 3-2. to two. And, uh, you know, from here on in, the Giants, uh, you know, I think the whole World Series, I think we had to say the uh, World Series MVP, Madison Bumgarner, definitely did his thing in this uh, series and is definitely uh, worthy of the MVP award. He had, um, he came out in Game 7 with five scoreless innings off of just two days rest after starting in that game before that and uh you know i think he put up one of the best performances in mlb world series history he had two wins in 20 innings pitched with a 0 0.5 era you know this is just an outstanding performance by him the offense definitely clicked and contributed to this and uh kind of like what frank was saying with the nfl i think that when you have a good picture in the, on the mound for you, and he's throwing you, you know, giving you good innings, and, you know, the offense sees that in you, and then that energy transfers over to the hitting, and, you know, they could start scoring runs, which they definitely did a great job of, where, uh, you know, we also had, uh, at the beginning of this play playoffs, I came out with a stat that said that the Giants had won in 2010, 2012, and I remember asking Gio, are you think they're going to do it in 2014? And, you know, like Gio said, he said they're, you know, they're usually the sleeper team. Nobody, everybody just overlooks them and doesn't really pay attention to the Giants. But yet, you know, this team, again, here in the World Series, they're one of the select groups that won their third World Series in five seasons. So, you know, this is definitely a very successful team that we're looking at right here. And, you know, as I said earlier in our uh, broadcast, uh, broadcast, one of the first broadcasts we had, I said how, you know, Tim Lincecum isn't even a factor in this at all, anywhere in there, you know. So I think that this team definitely, uh, you know, pulled together, and uh, I'm going to let you guys build off of some of that with me. But, uh, you know, main gist of the story was they won the World Series in seven games where they had this Royals team that was, you know, coming off of a lot of energy, a young squad, first uh, time back in the playoffs in a long time for almost 30 years. And, you know, they basically put a silence to that. So, you know, it was definitely a hard thing because I think a lot of the country had KC in this series because they just wanted to see a team that wanted to win that hasn't won in a while. I was one of them myself, and I know a lot of people that were with me on that. And, uh, you know, it, it was a very hard situation for them, especially Game 7 in KC. They got it done, though, and now they're the champs. So, G, I want to give you, uh, I want to hear your insight on this entire World Series. Yeah, first of all, let's give you know an applause to the to, to the Royals because they they put up a hell of a series or a hell of a postseason to even get there. Um, and I know, you know, I I didn't give them a chance in our earlier broadcast until the end, and then I picked them in the World Series, and I was wrong. So shout out to you know Big Shot Rob for a second. Big who, Shot Rob <laughs> definitely <laughs> is owed. He's tremendous. Genius, honestly, credit he's making uh, he's making the calls and he was right. He said the Giants would win the wild card and get in and win. So I mean, I'm gonna ha I might have to retire and let Frank take over and let him come over here on Tuesdays. <laughs> but uh, no, in all Absolutely. honesty, in all honesty though, like you know, it's a really good series. It was a really good series. I said, if you remember, like the week before the series started, um, that we would have a long series because I, I thought it was going to go to at least six. There was no way it wouldn't, you know, when you have Bumgarner and you have James Shields, who actually didn't have that great of a, a World Series, let's say. No. Um, not. but you know, when you have Bumgarner and then you have, you know, decent pitchers on the Royals like Ventura, the rookie who, who carried them a little bit this this series. Um, I knew it was going to go far, but like you said. 
you know, Bumgarner is like is literally the MVP. I think he was an NLCS MVP too, wasn't he? Something yes, like he that. was. So yeah, I mean, he just won two MVPs in a row, and he came off a game where he he had a nine nine inning shutout. He had a complete game shutout, and then he comes in on two days rest and gives a five inning you know close to the game to to clinch the World Series um, championship for them. Like that, that just that just speaks volumes. And in that game, just to touch on how you said. Um, defense contributes to offense as well. You know, there was a whole play with Joe Panic, another rookie for the Giants, who made an outstanding double play turn. If he didn't do that, who knows where they would have been? They would have been on first and third the rolls. They would have had a, you know, they could have had a chance to score. But instead, no, he was able to make that defensive play, and that translated. Um, you know, it stopped the run, and then the pitching. I mean, the offense took over, scored the runs they needed, and you know, the pitchers took care um, of everything. Bumgarner really took care of that series. So. You know, it's a great it's a great thing for the Giants and they're they're showing that they could be one of the next dynasties because they've won so many championships in a row. I mean, yeah. uh in the space of five years, you know, a short short amount. Right. They are getting in an elite group of teams. Uh I read a stat earlier just off the top of my head, I see in teams like the John, uh the uh Yankees, the the Dodgers and Red Sox, teams like that, you know, the Giants are definitely becoming a, a big team up yeah. there. I can definitely say that. And um you know, we'll see how they keep going and how they keep growing. Uh, I want to also hear from Frank now because we never heard from him in the beginning of the postseason, uh, and that uh, specifically at the beginning of the World Series. What did what were your predictions on coming into this series? I want to hear what you had. Well, coming in, I was um, I was favored on the Cardinals. I thought the Cardinals were going to win it all, but um, okay. you know, after they won the wild card, they won their couple of series. Going into the World Series, I had them picked, and uh, the thing that gets me is that the people are shocked that the Giants are winning the World Series. 2010, 2012, 2014. I don't understand why they're not figuring out how good this team is. And this is a perfect example of Moneyball, like the Oakland Athletics. Oh, I right. don't have I don't right. have the paper in front of me, but I want to know what their payroll is compared to the Yankees, who didn't even make the playoffs, compared to the Dodgers, who got knocked out with their ace pitcher, Clayton, uh, Clayton Kershaw. This is just an example. Pablo Sandoval, Buster Posey. Not top-notch guys, but just very good baseball players that know how to play the game, know how to play as a team. They added good... Older veteran pitchers that are big in the World Series, and I think that's what helped them shine over uh, Kansas City because Kansas City has a just young team everywhere. They yeah. just have a young team everywhere. They don't have playoff experience. Giants came off two World Series in the last four years, and uh, I didn't give them the respect I should have, and uh, I'm giving it to them now because I think they played really well and uh, much deserve respect. Yeah, let me just say something, Vin, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, like, just an example of why this team wins so much, too is their manager. Um, I mean, just their coaching staff. Bruce Bochy, like, literally pulled off a genius move in this in the clincher in Game 7. He started Tim Hudson, I believe, had two innings. Then he had FL come in, take over for a little bit, to set up, you know, Bumgarner on his short rest. What, you know, some managers don't have, you know, the guts to do that. He went with his gut, and he did it, and, and look what happens. When you have someone who will take that risk, and he's won series in the past. Obviously, we said they've won two before before this one. Um, so with that in mind, you have to give the, the coaching staff credit too. They made the right moves, and and it paid off for them. They literally just played that game seven perfectly. So you know it's all the credit to them as well. Yeah, I think in a winner all situation, game seven, I think that you know you have to pull out any trick in the book that you think you have to win the World Series. You know that that was a big uh, spot for Bumgarner. I'm sure that uh, he had a conversation. That the both of them had a conversation before the game whether or not that he'd be able to pitch, and I'm sure Bumgarner said yes, absolutely. Because I don't know if you heard this after that game, uh, they said, Were you know, are you tired? And he goes, Yeah, I'm tired now after the game, mm -hmm. that after I this series, that. right? So, you know, I think that there was so much adrenaline going on that you know, he could definitely he probably could have gone another 20 innings if they had to, if that was the case, but you know, all in all, great. Uh, performance from both teams. Want to congratulate also the Giants on their World Series win. And um, yeah, also another thing with the Giants. Now that we're on top of them, also uh, interesting that uh, Pablo Sandoval, who caught the final out in the Game Seven of the World Series to win, is actually uh, he didn't sign his uh, extension renewal contract with the Giants. Uh, Frank was telling me about this. Frank, yeah, Frank let me get a little insight on this. Uh, well, actually, I was looking on my Twitter today, to be honest, and um, I read an ESPN thing saying that he didn't sign an extension and he's going to become a free agent. Um, that doesn't mean he's not going to come back to the Giants. He probably wasn't happy with the offer they gave. 
Uh, he has to be happy with the Giants. He just won three World Series with them in the last five years. Uh, there's probably not a miscommunication. Uh, to be honest, the Giants are a top three organization in baseball that no one talks about. They're right up there with St. Louis and some other organizations that do it, that win big with low money. And um, there's a reason why they gave him that amount of money. They didn't give him as much as they should have because I think they're a smart organization. So we're going to see who gives him the money, and let's see where he ends up uh, coming into the next season. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm interested to see where he's going to go. And, uh, you know, I think definitely a weapon on any lineup, anywhere you put him. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. So that'll do it for the whole MLB World, Se uh, World Series and season, for that matter. Any uh, headlines that we come across from now till next season, we'll definitely keep you posted. But uh, I'll close out on that. So now we're going to get into the NBA season. We're, you know, a week in here. And, you know, stuff already. Big things going down as is. We got the Knicks, who are currently 2-1. and one, And they play the Pistons tonight at home in MSG. And they're actually in a back-to-back -back series with the Pistons right now. One at home tonight, one away tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we got we seen a great game from them the other night on Sunday night <coughs> against... Uh, who, who did they play the other night on Sunday night? Charlotte. Charlotte, Charlotte right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we seen them play the other night, and I think that there was a lot of things clicking in that game. I heard a quote from Melo say, "I think that there a lot of the bad tension from last year has been released." I heard I seen a quote from him with that. You want to see Melo always say good things about this team because, in the end, you know this is his team, and now they got a new organization with Phil Jackson, and uh, you know Derek Fisher. Th this team is definitely trying to work hard. We can see it in their play, us being uh, New Yorkers in here. Let me hear what you got to say about the Knicks. All right, I guess I'll go first. So, you know, I'm impressed with with the way they bounced back after the blowout in Chicago. Um, when, I mean, I think they were home anyway, but, I mean, they lost to Chicago in a big way by more than 20 of a margin. So, you know, after that, Knicks fans were already getting on getting on the team and, you know, saying they're going to have a terrible season. But then, they, but then the next night, exactly, we what LeBron. happens? We beat the Cavs. Oh, forget it. In this, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. So we ruined, you know, LeBron's little homecoming that he had. Um, Very happy about, by the way. Anybody who's a great. LeBron fan, I, you know, I'm sorry. Definitely a, the greatest player playing right now, but not a fan. KD all the way. It's all right. I'm a LeBron fan, but I mean, I didn't care because we, I wanted the team to win. But right. yeah, I know you're a KD fan, but. Uh, we're going to get to him soon as well in the OKC right, Thunder. Right. Um, but, yeah, they came back. They beat the Cavs um, in a good game. And then they they went on to beat Charlotte in a game where they were actually up big and then lost the lead. But they had some resilience down the stretch. And they were able to win through Melo and some of his clutch gene that he has. And he tried to, you know, hit a nice jumper. And then the defense had to stop. But like you said, we have... You know, a lot of things depending on if the Knicks have a good season or not. It depends on how well they mesh together. There's a lot of new players. It's not just a few. They have, you know, Jason Smith on, and Samuel Dallenbear. They have Calderon, who even who hasn't even played yet. He's out with an injury, but he's going to be their starting point guard. Right now, they're going through Shane Larkin. We have Melo and J.R. Smith are back, but, I mean, they have to still get used to a new offense. They're playing the triangle offense now, so it's not the same as last year. They're still going to have to get you know used to a whole another system. Um, we have the new coaching staff. Phil's here for you know his second year or whatever. He had it like a half year last year, but he set up you know Derek Fisher with a good coaching staff. He also has Kurt Rambis on the sideline with him, so it's not you know he's trying to make Fisher you know a good coach and trying to get him you know set up to have a good season. You don't want to have your first year coach. And just in all, you know, in all aspects, he's also a rookie coach. Have a terrible season and have you know him in the spotlight as one of the reasons why this team is failing. Right now, besides that first game, you know the defense still needs to step up, but we have a lot of production. You know, Shumpert's been playing great. We have Melo; he's been having good games. You have Amari, who's looking good for his age and the injuries he's had. He's looking fresh. Um, we know he took care of himself in the off season. We have. I, I think. Uh I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No problem, I think no one person that everybody is sleeping on right now that definitely one of the I think one of the oldest players in the NBA right now. I, I'd have to check the stat on that, but one of the oldest players on that team for sure is uh Pergioni. Yeah, and Pablo Pergioni. He's been hustling doing his thing there, but c keep going, continue. No, yeah, I was going to get to him next because he's part of the point guard, you know, crew there. 
I think you're right. I think he is the oldest player in the NBA, if I'm not mistaken, because he was the oldest rookie at least last year. But um, he's one of the oldest, and he takes care of himself well. You know, he plays a few minutes, and now they're going to need him until Calderon comes back. And we saw that Derek Fisher, instead of going with Larkin in the end for that stretch down against uh, the, uh, the Hornets, he put in Prigioni because he knew he had to come up with a big stop. He had a big steal, and, you know, he always has assists. He's always uh, a player who's going to pass over shoot because he doesn't really like to shoot he likes to facilitate so things are going well right now but we're not going to get over exaggerated because uh and not overreact because we know you know they they might be like six or seven seed or lucky to be over there because the, the east is is pretty good this year we're going to get into so, seating right yeah we're going to get seating with frank but frank i'll let you talk about the knicks real quick if you want to yeah, put anything um, yeah let me just start by saying that uh the knicks aren't built to compete this team isn't built to compete uh they're, they're absolutely in a re- rebuilding stage if they were built to win a championship this year, they would have never traded Tyson Chandler. Yep. Uh, I think they're absolutely in a rebuilding stage. And I think that the past two games they just played is going to be uh, an idea of what their whole season is going to come to. They're going to lose to Chicago. They're going to lose to the big teams. And they're going to play competitive against the average team such as Charlotte. Uh, I'm not going to count that Cavs game. I mean, uh, I'm a LeBron fan. But uh, I don't want to say that the nerves got to him for the first game, shooting one for the nine, eight turnovers. This is his first game black in Cleveland in uh, four seasons. So I'm not really going to say, hey, you know what, they beat the Cavs. This team's going to win the East. Yeah, yeah. So my sights aren't really big on the Knicks. Um, I think Melo's still the same Melo from last season, which I think he needs to change up. and needs to, uh, He needs to add a couple more components to his game. I think J.R. Smith is the same J.R. Smith. I think they got uh, they got all right key components, but definitely not built to win a championship in a, in a lackluster East. Not really a competitive East, but they still can't compete against Chicago. Or uh, Cleveland, and even Miami in that fact. Yeah, like, they'll get to the playoffs, but not get far. They might I wouldn't, be first yeah. round. I wouldn't be lose. surprised yeah. if they're a 7 eight seed, but they're not yeah. going much further than that with the team that they have. Yeah. Right, and we've heard talk over these past couple of days also about Kobe Bryant apparently coming to the Knicks. And, uh, you know, I think that the whole thing with that is just because of Phil Jackson. Yeah. But, you know, can you guys picture Kobe in, in New York? Uh, not at all. I don't know about you, Frank. but Well, I don't want to pay Kobe. Yeah, I don't want to get. Why? We, listen, we're in a rebuilding stage. I, I, we is in the Knicks. Knicks are in a rebuilding stage, and you're going to give a lot of your money. We're we're big in the salary yeah. cap right look, now, and we're going to give most of our money. Look to at Kobe Lakers' Bryant. contract. They gave him two years, forty eight million dollars. Yeah. And if they trade that to us, what are we going to do with that? We we want the money off the books. Amari's coming off the books, and Bargnani's coming off the books. We can get three young players yeah. for that money. Exactly. Yeah. And we and we, if we want to sign a big a big free agent, you know, we don't want his money. We want free money. We can get Marcus Saul. And right. who knows, maybe right. we can make a pitch to KD in the future, even though that probably won't happen. But, yeah, baby. You know, we, we wish we would see him in a New York uniform. Kobe yeah. Mello wouldn't work at any age. The two no, of them right. together couldn't work together. Ball hogs anyway. Right. I agree. Uh, all right, well, that's for the Knicks portion of tonight. They're, like As we said, playing the Pistons tonight at home, MSG. Now on the other side, the other New York team, we got the Brooklyn Nets, who are also 2-1, and one, who are playing on Wednesday, tomorrow night, against the Timberwolves. They'll be home. But last night got uh, a huge W against OKC, and you know I they definitely played great last night. Six guys in double figures with Brook Lopez leading them with 18 points, and uh, you know I think they played great last night. I, it was definitely a heartbreaker for me to watch because, as I said, I'm a KD fan. I like to see OKC definitely you know be successful, and uh, I'm waiting for them to win their championship soon i hope it comes this year i've been saying every year that they're going to win and i hope this year can finally be their year but you know on top of the nets we last night i think that the nets definitely uh you know they have a um a new coach in lionel hollins they had uh jason kidd he, he's gone now and i think that this team is definitely trying to you know use their weapons they they have a lot of weapons they have darren williams they have joe johnson they got brooke lopez now who's i hope can stay away from the injuries this year because that was huge last year. And, uh, you know, they can definitely be a possible threat down the line, in my opinion. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about Brooklyn. Yeah, um, I'll go first again. I'll just I'll just agree with you, you know, saying they could be a possible threat. You know, personally, I'm not going to choose, you know, choose to say this over bias because I'm a Knicks fan. But, you know, I still don't think they're, they're championship ready either. I don't think they're, they're going to, they're better than the Bulls or the Cavs. Um, down the line, I don't see that, but they could, you know, give them a little problem for sure. 
Um, I see them doing probably better than the Knicks just because they have, like you said, a couple key pieces. Um, one thing you mentioned, which is huge for the whole team, is Brook Lopez if he's healthy. Because when he is healthy, he's a double-double guy. He can give you a lot of production. Um, he has, like, an unorthodox game for, for his size. You know, he can shoot jumpers, and he can, uh, s you know, spread spread the floor out a little bit. And then he has a little post game as well. He, he can hit some hooks. He can uh, drive in a little bit. So... You know, with him being healthy, like you said, he came from, I think uh, last night was his debut, actually, and 18 yes, points. Yes, it was. Yeah, 18 points in his first game leading his team is great. You need an, a healthy Darren Williams, too, because if he's not healthy with his ankle problems that he always has, um, then this team might not go anywhere either. But, you, you know, they have Joe Johnson. Um, they have... Um, Darren Williams and Brooke Lopez, like we mentioned, they have a decent bench. Uh, Alan Anderson had a good game off Great the bench night. yesterday, Great so night, yeah. um, that was that was good for them as well. So I mean, I see them, you know, six seed, something like that, above the Knicks, but and they could be, you know, danger for a top team, but I don't see them championship ready. So that's you know, that's what I'll say about that. All right, and Frank, let me hear what you got to say about Brooklyn. Well, uh, I think to me, Brooklyn is a perfect example of a team that can compete in a weak East. That could actually be a top four team, maybe five team. Injury, injury, with well, an injury prone team. Uh, Brooke has to stay healthy. Joe Johnson has to stay healthy. Deron Williams has to stay healthy. You got an old Kevin Garnett. Right. This is a team that could compete. And um, to me, as far as the East goes, outside of Cleveland, Chicago, Miami, in whatever order, I think four to eight is pretty much wide open in the East. I think Brooklyn could definitely take that spot. I think Toronto's a competitive team. I think uh, Washington's pretty competitive. But as far as Brooklyn goes, they could definitely be a top five team. Uh, with, without injuries, um, they played great last night against a you know a beat up Thunder team. Uh, we're not going to take anything away from Brooklyn though for a big win, but uh, definitely in a weak East, th this team could compete. Right, OKC as we said they're in a in a tough spot right now. Just uh, the other night, uh, Russell Westbrook now their starting point guard. He underwent successful surgery on Saturday. That was good to hear. Good news for them. But uh, a fractured right hand, and he'll be reevaluated in another four weeks. So we, we're not looking at him for another uh, at least a month. And then we got KD with his fractured right foot. These are two two of their main guys here that are uh, out. And um, we actually didn't even have Reggie Jackson make his debut till last night. Also, the backup point guard. And uh, you know. We, we we won't see KD till at least the end of this month either at the at the very earliest you know that's not even guaranteed so uh, this is usually a team that we look at as being the top of the West where you know do you think do you guys think that after these two guys come back and they can start building from there do you think that they can gain some success along the way um, I think this is a a team that was built for greatness coming into the season. I think that they were going to be a top two team in the East, and I thought they were going to come out of the, uh, the West. I'm sorry. I thought they were going to come out of the West. But uh, Kevin Durant out six to eight weeks. Russell Westbrook out four to six weeks. I mean, it's not out, like they're out for the whole season. They'll be back before even the All-Star break. But uh, four to six weeks in a very tough West, that could affect them a lot. Uh, when Durant and uh, Westbrook come back, I think they're definitely still going to make the playoffs. When uh, playoffs come around, it's anybody's turn. But uh, I think it's going to affect them with home court advantage. This hurt them early in a tough West, like I said. Um, they're definitely going to bounce back. they got a good team outside of those two. It's not like those two are the whole team, but those are the main components of the team. So we're just going to see. Time will tell. They're 1-3 right now. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much for else for me to say. He hit all the points there. Um, they're still going to be you know, a good team in the West. It's just a matter of having them come back, which might take a while. But until then, I mean, I hope they can string... You know, wins together because if they don't, then they could put themselves in a bad situation. Um, because what are they? Zero and four, zero and three, one and three, one and oh, three. One and three. Yeah. They did win already. Okay, so then you know they're f they'll be okay once they come back. Westbrook, you know, actually they might come around the same time as we look at it now because four weeks. And I know you were mentioning before, KD's ahead of uh, you know, the pro uh, you know, making progress ahead of what they originally said he right. would be when he comes back. Right. So I'll let I'll let you talk about that one with him. But I mean, if they can come back at the same time and then you know just pick the team back up, I think they'll be fine because the schedule is spread out anyway. So you know they're not going to be like oh and four, you know. 10 and 30 by the time they come back right. they're gonna they're gonna have a chance to regain regain their confidence and get some wins so I'm, i mean i'm not too worried about them but for now it's looking bad right. they know what it takes to win yeah right very anticipated to see what they do once the both of them come back and uh what you know what they can do come playoff time because you know we know they'll be there so uh that'll wrap it up for the nba section of uh 
this week. We'll have you covered again next week with all that. But uh, we're going to take a short break now. And when we come back, we're going to have some soccer thoughts. And uh, Gio's going to get us covered on all that. Yep, and got you guys. We'll keep you guys covered on all that. So take a short break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 